Good day there, YouTube. Welcome back to the shop. Dr. Yash here. Well, here is the big Dynaglo Pro 135,000 BTUs. And I kind of jumped the gun. I started in on this one this morning. It is the afternoon now. And uh, I'm coming back to it to uh, show you all what's going on with it. Well, I jumped in here. Like I said, I jumped the gun. I've already had the combustion chamber out, and I'll give you a rundown of what I ran across and basically what I found so far and what I've done so far. So when I picked this up, when I went to roll it out of the shop from where I was at, there was diesel fuel running out the back of the, uh, the bottom of this orange sheet metal here. When I went to fire it up to test it out, it was basically just shooting... Um, liquid fuel out the end you can see it you might be able to see in there it's kind of moist kind of moist so and uh, my fingers are wet from diesel fuel so i get looking around in here i pulled the top on this and there's diesel fuel inside here you can see some dark around here um you can see some dark yeah i mean great now i gotta clean that <laughs> Uh, these things are operated in really nasty environments. I'm kind of joking about needing to clean that, but basically I cleaned out underneath here just because of the extent of how nasty it was. I mean, the, this piece here, this is the spark ignition on this model. This porcelain block here was completely covered in... I don't even know, I don't even know how this happened. Um, how there was so much diesel fuel sprayed everywhere. These tips were completely coated in thick black carbon. Um, I do believe that it was actually shorting. The uh, ignition was shorting and that's what was causing the issues where it wouldn't ignite. It would just spray fuel out and dump it out the end. Um, I did clean the nozzle because it was nasty on the end. The tips on the ignition, uh, basically for lack of a better term, the spark plug, they were nasty. Um, I did pull the I pulled the combustion chamber off of the back, so you'll actually get to see the inside of this now. Uh, I pulled the combustion chamber off the back and cleaned it out quite a bit because it was filthy. I mean, there's just junk caked up in there, but it, it sits on the back of the um, sits on the back of the the combustion chamber like this. Is just like a burner assembly, and it also directs the air in in a swirling motion. You can see it creates a turbulent airflow around as it goes into here in order to uh, help atomize the fuel better you know so we got the air going in here which siphons the fuel in here the air goes in here and sprays out around the outside um, you may be able to see in there you may not be able to but there's two chambers to these nozzles there's a fuel tip in the middle and the air chamber on the outside and we were getting enough air and fuel flow obviously but no ignition but this needed to be cleaned um, so basically we had enough airflow because we were getting enough fuel flow for everything to, uh, you know, for it to be producing that much fuel at the end of it. But, um, so half of this video you're just going to be seeing me putting a lot of this back together. Um, but in a nutshell, what I found here is everything was just filthy everything was filthy so i just went with you know, some soapy water and all the more stubborn stuff using carbon choke cleaner just cleaning the carbon around here so we get good airflow going in um so this when this thing does take off it'll uh it'll actually burn clean um i've worked on this unit before several years ago um and the customer hadn't had any trouble until until he uh contacted me about this one but I mean, even these boots for the ignition, they were all just coated in fuel and, and just grease and grime because it's in a dusty environment and then everything getting, getting wet with fuel, it just makes like a big greasy mess. Well, these are all paths for the ignition voltage to short to ground. So I think that may be part of the problem here. Um, but I'm also finding, just like in the last one, um, I'm finding split hoses on the air and fuel side of things so I'm going to continue what I was what I had started this morning 
Um, and I'm going to continue changing the hoses. And I'm going to reassemble the unit and we're going to see what happens after that. So this one is not much of a pre-diagnosis like uh, the last one was. So you'll get a little bit more seat of the pants. Uh, ride with me. Let's see what's going on. Just pushing off this rear air hose here. So there's your air hose. You see it's it's covered in diesel covered in, uh, in just grease and grit and uh, these all these hoses are kind of split at the ends so they're just going to get replaced with the clear stuff um, the fuel hose I think I may have actually thrown out the fuel hose already but that one was split as well which is where I think a lot of the uh, a lot of the mess was coming from This, uh, this fuel hose goes down over here and then comes back up through the frame and connects to the air pump back here. Uh, a little bit differently than the previous one we looked at, but this is also twice the, twice the size. So it's set up a little bit differently. Of course, this one's on wheels, otherwise it's on wheels and considerably heavier than the 65K. Otherwise, I would have it up on the, uh, I would have it up on the table showing you all this. this if I go from the back and push forward. There we go. Slip that up in here. Got the rear hose on. We'll have to trim some of that off when we put the chamber back in. But And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put the we're going to pull this fuel filter out. I haven't pulled it yet. If I can get it out of there. This one's going to give me a little bit of fuss. Wind got some pliers. come up out of here. It's uh, twisted all the way around, but it's not coming out of the bottom of the tank. some hair on the bottom. This is why you always pull them and check them, just in case. That one wasn't too bad, but it had a little, little bit of debris in it. But you want that perfect, because remember, it's siphoning fuel up out of the tank. You want that as good a flow as you can get. You can see it's not a very fine mesh, so that's how that's how you get some of the uh, grit in there that can actually wear down the fuel nozzle on these. As I got mentioned in the last video. Make 
sure I have all this lined up because it can go on here a few different ways. your hoses in your leads reach there's not really an orientation other than what's most efficient for all the uh, plumbing and the wiring to attach to the back of here but even the uh, even the photo cell was was full of junk on this one See the quarter inch hose does fit on the fuel filter and on the fuel nozzle on this model. Nice snug fit on there. And when you put these on you can actually put them in backwards. Make sure when you install the, the spark unit or the uh, spark plug that the electrodes are in the stream of the fuel, otherwise it won't ignite it. But yeah, this whole thing was black. I mean, even between these little spark gaps, it was completely full of junk. So, I'm quite confident that the um, I'm quite confident that the spark energy was not actually jumping that gap the way it should and therefore not causing uh, proper ignition. So, like we did on the last one, we're going to go through with the hoses because it needs them. I'm also going to uh, make sure our pump pressure is correct. going to on this one it is the front fitting which is for the air and the rear one going to the rear or the rear one going down to the fuel filter because that is the fuel fitting on this one there is not a polarity for the igniter wires, or the spark plug wires. It is, uh, well, it's AC voltage, so it's an AC transformer, so it's jumping that spark gap back and forth. So, at this point, you can see why I put the hoods on these. I mean, if this starts moving around, it, it's gonna cause some weird stuff to happen, so. Um, you know, there's a spacing between this fan and the back of this chamber. If this is bouncing around, it's not going to run right. I'm going to go ahead and pull this. Go ahead and pull this gauge out of the back of here and put a put a good gauge on it. I don't trust the one the ones that these ship with. A lot of times, they're not quite what they need to be. They're usually a little off, especially after they got some age. This particular model has a thermostat, but it also has a temperature sensor, and it actually has uh, the ambient temperature uh, showing up right on the side of the unit, but it doesn't have the error code screen. So all these different models, they all have different features, and some have more features than others, and some of them have the error code screen and no temperature so 
Actually, does this one have error codes? This one does show error codes. I forgot about that. Found my air gauge. I stuck it back in the drawer where it goes and lost it. That was when you put things away. You can't find them. I'll go ahead and fire this one up. The spec table calls for for 5.5 pounds of fuel pressure or air pressure for the air pump. So my screwdriver, make sure that that screw isn't stuck for some reason. Alright, I'm gonna fire it up, see where it's at. The thermostat's working. Still a little smoky, but that's uh, probably some residual, uh, you know, diesel in the system, you know, in this chamber. Well, that's rough. This one needs to run and get fully up to temperature and dry it out again, because um, I think there is, uh, yeah, there's a lot of diesel. There's an inner here. I will show you. You see all the smoke. But if you see there's a an inner chamber here, and then there's an outer sleeve on it. Well, that sleeve had liquid fuel in it. As you can see, there's still a little bit of liquid there. Um, and also there's leftover like soapy water and stuff from cleaning parts of it, um, plus whatever residues are in here. So this thing needs to come up to full temperature and not dumping fuel out the back of it anymore so that's a good sign it's, there was definitely fuel coming out the back of this one you've seen a lot of little uh, flying bits of carbon coming out of it but um, you know basically I'm gonna run this one a little while off camera for a few minutes uh, outside and see if uh, 
see if we can get it to clear up. So I'll be right back. So I ran it for a little while longer. Um, verified that the pump pressure was stable after running for a while. Uh, most of the, I mean, well, it burns clean. If it burns clean, there's no more uh, any flames trying to come around from the excess fuel uh, vapors and uh, the, all the liquid fuel is dried up. I did notice that during cool down uh, that there was a little bit of smoke still coming out. Um, but also at the same time I noticed that on the outside of the burner here there is some chalky residue and in some areas it's pretty yellow looking. I have a feeling that this is not a low sulfur diesel that they typically run in this. Uh, I think this is probably some sort of off-road diesel. I actually didn't check to see if it was dyed. They said it had the fuel in it that they usually run in it, so um, and it doesn't appear to be a fuel quality issue that we were dealing with here. So I didn't I didn't investigate further into the type of fuel they're using because uh, I don't I just simply don't believe that it was necessary. Uh, it's got half a tank of fuel in it. We said it was running fine for the first half and then started doing this. So. Um, but yeah, I think it might be a you know more sulfurous diesel, some sort of off-road diesel or, or what have you. And I don't think it's uh, really a, you know the low sulfur diesel burns really clean in these. Typically, this one had a little bit of smoke on shutdown uh, after it was cooling down, but it was nothing major. Um, it's burning clean at five and a half psi. Um, I like how it is. The thermostat works. The you know it comes right up as soon as it starts spinning. The combustion's on. It uh, blows a little bit like a small puff of smoke out when it first ignites, but it's not anything concerning. And especially for one, this one in particular, I know has a lot of hours on it. It, uh, you know, it's it's been around and it gets used constantly. If it's cold, th this one gets used, you know, day in and day out uh, in the location where it normally resides. So. Um, for it to run this well, I'm pretty happy uh, with its performance. It's quite a few years old at this point, so um, I'll probably give the guy a few more years before I ever see it again, just like last time. So I'm happy with it. I think the customer's going to be happy with it. Um, so, anyways, I don't have any more heaters. We want to get some more in. I'll probably do some more videos because I kind of enjoy this little segment doing heaters and stuff. So run into different challenges and different repairs. It's kind of fun. But anyways, y'all know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if there's something uh, you want to hear about with these heaters, some problem you have that uh, I haven't run across yet or that I haven't addressed yet. And um, I'll see what I can do to get a video out for it. But yeah, until next time, see you later.